Hey, Richard here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, we're gonna be working on attacking the high floaty ball with your forehand. The ability to do this is really kind of one of the shots that separates the levels, but it's also a shot that a lot of players struggle with. So let's start by taking a look at a few forehands. Now I'm a right-handed player, but I'm relearning to play left-handed. And here, the two things that I'm focusing on are trying to maintain my distance from the ball because I have a, a bad habit of getting a little bit too close. And then after that, it's all about the timing. I'm trying to time driving through my left hip, my back hip. And if you're a right-handed player, obviously that's gonna be your right hip. But I'm trying to drive through my left hip to initiate the swing and use my full kinetic chain and really try and get the timing so that I can generate racket head speed efficiently without having to kind of force it with my arm. When the ball's floating towards us, we've got to generate our own pace. And that's what a lot of people find challenging, especially because we're gonna be taking the ball up a little bit higher, maybe around shoulder height. So the most important thing is gonna be that you use your legs properly to initiate the swing. And that means as you prepare for your shot, you're gonna be loading into that outside hip. So I'm rotating into this outside hip so that I can then drive through the outside hip to initiate the swing. And one of the key points is gonna be you thinking about timing, driving through the outside hip in relation to where the ball is. So potentially starting to drive through that hip around the time that the ball bounces. In this video, I'm working on attacking a cross-cut ball. It's fairly floaty. I'm just trying to take it about shoulder height and be aggressive with it. As I've just said, the main thing that I'm working on is trying to load into my left hip and drive through my outside hip. So because of that, one of the big things that I spend a lot of my time working on is my footwork. Because if you don't use appropriate footwork as you move towards the ball, it's really hard to load into your outside leg. If you would like help in that area, I've actually created a free footwork program to teach you how to prepare more effectively on all of your shots. So I'll place a link to that up in the corner and I'll also place a link down in the description so you can check that out if you're interested. As you can see, the timing is absolutely critical. Obviously, we've got the timing of what's going on with our legs, but then we've also got to coordinate and time what happens with our upper body as well. And something that I found really useful when I was learning to do this with my right hand, and something that I still think about now I'm learning with my left hand, is kind of abbreviating my racket drop just a little bit, kind of where I take my racket back to. So if I was hitting the ball from lower, I'm okay taking a little bit more of a full cut doing my racket drop somewhere back here because I've then got time to come through and up the back of the ball. But with the higher balls, the timing is a little bit different. So what you might want to think about is instead of dropping the racket back there somewhere, think about dropping the racket and pushing it more to the side. So it sounds like a funny cue, but I found it really effective. As I drove through my hips, I used to think about pushing my racket out to the side rather than pushing it back quite so much. So it ends up being more there and then you come through into the contact point. So those few things are the main focus of my practice sessions at the moment. I'm trying to drive through that outside hip to initiate the forward swing. I'm trying to make any necessary adjustments with my arm and hands just to kind of feel it out and get used to the timing and then the big issue for me, like I said, is the footwork. If you kind of notice, I take an, an extra little stutter step with my right, and that's throwing my timing off. Now that's in large part because I had a, a large foot injury when I was younger and I can't bend my right toe, but I'm still working on it by trying to pre-program in the footwork steps so I get better at compensating for that, setting up and loading and driving through the outside hip. Okay, hopefully you found this video helpful. It's a really important shot to develop if you wanna be able to put away weaker opponents. Remember to grab that free footwork program because the footwork's a key piece. You have gotta be able to set up in the right position and load into that outside leg. So then you can drive through it to generate the racket head speed. But something that might create problems for you is the coordination side of things. The eye to foot and the eye to hand coordination because timing is one of the hardest parts in tennis and realistically, a lot of players' visual systems uh, don't function well enough to allow them to have high level timing and a lot of players aren't coordinated enough to have high level timing. The good news though is that you can actually change that sort of thing with the right training and that's what I help players with. I teach them brain-based training to improve their visual processing, to improve their coordination so they can play high level tennis. 
If you would like to learn more about that, I've created a free web class that's going to teach you about it. I'll place a link up there and I'll place a link down in the description so that you can check it out if you are interested. If you've got any questions about what I've talked about in this video, if you've got any comments, I would love to hear them down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.